For some reason, humans have a fascination with teeny tiny things. Tiny homes, tiny little figures of big figures, tiny actual builds in Minecraft. Here is a tiny home that's really like a mansion. It has like four different floors, everything built in. I absolutely love it, so let's jump in. So here we are inside of Minecraft, and first, let me give you a little bit of a tour of this tiny home. First thing is first, and that is in order to get in, you do have to crouch and then you can fit inside the first level of this house and it only gets smaller from here. So you come on in and this is a nice cozy living room. You got some uh, some light, a light source. You can tell what time of day it is. You can furnish some stuff up, craft a few things, and you even have some storage to leave a little bit of your items behind. You also have a nice painting and I put this ocean explorer map on here. You can also fall asleep right here and you'll be able to uh, wake up and whatnot uh, there as well. Let's go down to the basement first. We do that by standing on this trap door, opening it up and shutting the trap door again. And now we are in our crafting space. This is crafting extraordinaire. You can do almost everything. I mean, uh, the only thing you can't really do is brewing in this space so you got a stone cutter here let's talk about specialty blocks stone cutter you got your cartography table got your loom you can disenchant right here you have a nice inner chest so you have lots of storage inside of the inner chest you can open up an uh, anvil and then all along the walls these are all barrels so you have lots and lots of storage when it comes to that. You also have another smelter right there. And if you need a crafting table, there's one still up here in the ceiling, as well as another furnace. So if you need to smelt, you got two options for that. And so you can sort of double furnace, double smelt right there. Down below, you have your enchanting table, and this will enchant all the way up to level 30. So uh, you have all of the levels that you possibly need right down there. And let me think, is there anything, any other special thing? I don't think so. If you happen to accidentally fall into this space below, there is a way to get out. What you first have to do is jump, and as you jump, hit that bottom trap door. So we're gonna jump and it's gonna catch us right there. We'll have to open up the trap door ahead of us, above us, I should say, jump and cause that trap door to go off, then close the trap door and now you can get out. Then to get out of the basement, you gotta have to jump and hit that trap door at the exact same moment. Now let's head to the second floor uh, and we do that just by using the ladder, holding down shift and then we can get off of that area and we can close that again. And not only does this have one, two, and three floors, and it kind of has like a subfloor of the enchanting tail area, so you could consider it four floors. Uh, it also has multiple rooms in the second floor uh, story. So you start off here in this hallway, you head around, around the corner, and then bam, you got your brewing station, which I absolutely love. So inside of here, you have all of the brewing supplies. You have your brewing stand. All you have to do also to get more uh, water bottles is in the ceiling, there is some water and you can just kind of suck that up and then place your water bottles back in there. And if you happen to have a bucket and you need an infinite water source, we got you covered there. So we can go over here and suck up this water source right here, put it into your cauldron if you need it. And we have an infinite water source for you at uh, right there. Uh, we also have another crafting table just in case you need it. And like I mentioned, that barrel for storage. And this theme is sort of per per block theme. So that is the entire home. That's my that's my crib. That's the you know the end of the end of the tour. And now you can exit again. Go, let's head around to the back to see what this all looks like. And this is about as this is really all the space that it takes up. How many blocks is this? Nine blocks tall by, I believe it's five wide. Uh, it, and this one, this block right here isn't 100% uh, needed. Uh, so you could either do it uh, five you know, length and width and then nine tall, or you could add that one extra block right there to get that extra barrel there. 
This really should contain everything that you need in order to survive and live. And by the way, this entrance does not need to be this long. I just kind of wanted a little extra uh, right here. So if you wanted to, you could have your entrance right up at the beginning of the, the door and then you can you know have fun inside of your home. So let's build this together. We're gonna start off with the bottom layer. Let's go ahead and just destroy everything. And what you'll need for this are, it's pretty simple, bookshelves and an enchanting table. So I've created a little hole here. Uh, I, I overbuilt uh, the top, but this should just be perfect for us. It's just a five by five with uh, at least nine blocks of space at the top. So in order to start your enchanting area, you need to place down your books, bookshelves in this configuration. You could add an extra bookshelf here, but it is not necessary. You need at least 15 books and these corner ones do count. So then we're going to throw our enchanting table down on top of, uh, on top of the ground. And this should be able to get you all the way up to 30. If I'm able to actually get an item and then throw it in there. There you go all the way up to level 30. Now we just need to fill in some extra room because if you happen to have any block right here, that will actually lower your uh, your enchanting ability. And so we can't, we have to leave an open space, otherwise we'll have really, really low enchant. So we need to make sure that all of those blocks that were just stone are completely empty for us to start. Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, build up. This will be where all, all of our items go that will be in the workstation area. And I happen to have a nice list of everything that is gonna go in there over here inside of this chest. So you'll need a crafting table, uh, a, a furnace, then you're gonna need your specialty blocks like the stone cutter, the grindstone, cartography table, and loom. You'll need two oak trap doors, an inner chest, and then a ton of barrels, and then whatever you want to decorate uh, with as well. So we're gonna, oh, and then uh, you'll also need one anvil as well. So we're gonna head back over to our build and place all of those down around. I liked it coming down onto a very, very solid block, but really these could be placed in any orientation. This will eventually be where our ladder is. So we're gonna place down a solid block, a less solid block, another solid block that's gonna be the furnace. We'll come over here, we'll put down a loom and a cartography table. We still need the grindstone, a uh, stone cutter, and it looks like we are missing just a barrel just to, uh, add an extra space there and some extra storage. Uh, what I ended up doing was I put an anvil over in a corner, just like that, because the anvil is affected by gravity and nothing can be holding up the anvil if you want to have full levels. Uh, then I broke the block behind that anvil and put in a barrel. And then I put barrels all the way around. So we had lots and lots and lots of storage. Of course, if for some reason you hate this, you could do uh, shulker boxes. Uh, you could do uh, chests if you wanted. Uh, and that's how uh, that looks. Now we need to make sure that if we accidentally fall into the middle here, we will be able to get out. One way to do this is uh, to not put a block here yet. Place down one trap door. Place down another trap. Whoops, get out of here. Another trap door on top of that. Destroy that trap door and then add another trap door over there. Now these ones currently open in opposite directions. It's totally up to you if you want to change that around and we can place that back and that will still give us all of the uh, enchantments that we want. Now we're going to time to build on our next level. For this, the decoration around the walls can really be anything that you want. Uh, and we're just going to start with the roof and or the floor, I should say, and the ceiling of the previous level. And that's going to go like this. You're going to put down one slab there, a temporary slab, a slab over here, and then you're going to end up breaking that slab there. So really just two slabs, one over there and one right here. Then you're gonna fill in your solid blocks 
And that can be, uh, I like to put a, here, I'm gonna put this temporarily here, a barrel right there, then a crafting table, then a furnace, and that way you have double furnace and the crafting table can be reached from the other side. Go ahead and place down your trap door right here and then your secondary trapdoor and just place it on whatever the uh, the wall is gonna be. I'm gonna get to that in just a moment. So now let me grab my trapdoor again, and place it there, and we're gonna destroy that because that's temporary. And then your, uh, your bed, that can go facing this direction. Boop, there we go. And I like to add a little bit of decoration. We can add a lantern eventually hanging from the top or you can set it down here on any of these things, or you could even use a torch, it doesn't really matter. Uh, now let's get to the walls, and over on the other side, I just used oak planks and stripped oak logs, but I just don't happen to have those in my inventory, so let's grab both of those. Now the floor is a, uh, a slab there, so you're, I'm gonna start off with a block that I really only wanna see about half of, and so we can fill that in around the edge and you're not gonna see it behind those fully made blocks just like that. Then start with the block that you're gonna see most of the face of, which is gonna be these stripped oak logs. There we go. Now we can add a little bit more fun and, and decorations. I added uh, on an item frame the a clock, it's totally not needed, but all of this is just some nice decoration. I added some paintings, and if you remember, I had that map there on, on the wall as well. I also ended up adding some pots with some, what any type of vegetation that you want inside of it. I guess that would be in my decoration blocks. So you can really add anything that you want that you are happy with and that you kinda wanna like place inside of your house. I guess those rose bushes don't work. Um, there we go, boop. Actually, I'll just place my one wither rose right there. Also, just make sure that you place a uh, slab right there, and that way you'll have to be crouching in order to move into that first floor, just like that. Now it's time to work on the top floor. In this floor configuration, we are going to basically build all the way around, and then uh, the top and this I used I went ahead and used purper blocks uh, for this But you could really use any blocks. So here we go. Here's some purper uh, You're gonna start off with your solid blocks and these are gonna be seen halfway through the floor and Then you go ahead with the blocks that are gonna be fully seen on every side because this full block has the entire face uh, facing the character. We can get rid of that one and make sure it all works. Perfect. Uh, now go ahead and add a trap door right here. And you're also going to need to add a ladder underneath that trap door. And this is the way that you're going to be able to climb up onto this second area. Now we're gonna get a few brewing supplies. I always like to have a crafting table just because it's convenient to have one around. We're gonna go for a barrel, then we're gonna go for the uh, brewing stand and a cauldron as well. Finally, I really like having that little wall. I feel like it adds just a whole bunch of fun. So we're gonna get a trap door as that wall. Go ahead and place your barrel down and then your crafting table. I put my brew stand down on top of the barrel and then the cauldron on top of the crafting table. Then you'll take your spruce trap doors and slap them onto, whoa, I didn't mean to hold shift, uh, slap them down onto the edge of the, uh, the cauldron and the uh, brewing stand and then open them up and that way you'll have an extra little room to walk around in. I added some sea lanterns. Sea lanterns are not 100% needed. You could use pumpkins, you could use, I mean, you could also just stick torches onto the wall. So you could really choose anything that you want for your lighting source. This time, let's go ahead and go with glowstone. Also, you're going to need a uh, any type of slab, anything that can be waterlogged, really. Uh, and so we're gonna put the glowstone in the corners and I'm just temporarily adding a whole bunch of extra blocks that we don't actually need. There we go. And then the spruce 
in the middle. And then for the spruce, you're gonna eventually end up waterlogging this one, this one, and this one. So we wanna make sure that there's an extra block on those two. That way uh, it, will, it, it won't flow outside of those blocks because you need kind of a solid block over there. Then just take your water, fill in one, two, and three. And those, whenever you pull the water out of the middle, the water log will refill that middle one for us. So let's head back inside and all of this should be done. You have to shift in order to enter, open that up, head to the top, close the door, hold down shift. Everything is working great. This is our brewing stand and you can see all of the water. So we could grab those. If you want to, you can, uh, as long as there's uh, three ad adjacent water sources, you can really do whatever you want. So those water sources, if it makes more sense to have them be, uh, instead of right there, have it be right here. Whoops, and like I said, this is what happens if you don't accidentally put uh, put that block there. That way you really only have water there and there and over your cauldron anyway. So it's not just hanging out over your head. I really, really, really love this design. It was, uh, I got all my inspiration from Fedrin, who is on the Minecraft server, and I ended up seeing this house uh, on the Minecraft server, and I just really, really love it. I think that, I've seen a lot of tiny homes, and sometimes the tiny homes are so tiny, you can almost not even tell where blocks are. The reason that I like this one, I almost like Federer calls it a tiny mansion, is because you it actually feels like you can move around, you have some fun design elements, you have extra rooms, you have all the functionality uh, that you need, and it's just adorable. I really, really, really find this entire house super duper adorable. And once again, if you get trapped down here by accident, all you have to do is jump, close that, make sure that's open at the top, jump, open, close, and then you're back into the middle of this section. I did uh, change a few things from Fedrin's design, uh, like that little in thing. She actually didn't have a uh, an enchanting table with uh, full enchantments uh, down there, so I did change this around just a little bit, but most of this is from Fedrin's design. So there you go. Hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed the build. Once again, big thanks to Fedrin for the inspiration for this build. I hope that you enjoyed it and that somewhere in your world, you'll find a tiny spot for this tiny home. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you give it a big old thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe for future videos, tips, tricks, tutorials, and spotlights here on OMG Craft. See you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.